Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, a bit of change of pace. Don't worry, this is not gonna quickly become a car channel. Just something that I wanted to do on the side and film, document. I just think it's a fun process getting to work on my cars. And uh, right here I have two HKS blow-off valves. We're gonna be installing these in an effort to save my turbos in the long term. So first off, this is an air to water intercooler setup. You can see we have two of these air to water intercoolers and that charged air um, moves to the throttle bodies into the intake manifold. And uh, this is a V6 here. So twin turbo V6 produces stock. This is a Red Sports, about 400 horsepower, about 350 to the wheels. And uh, with what I've done to it so far, JB4, I've got down pipes and uh, axle back exhaust. It's not really gonna change much. Uh, cold air intake system, which is kind of a joke. It's not really a cold air intake system, but you get that little whoosh effect. Not likely to change horsepower much at all. I expect I'm probably pushing somewhere close to 400 at the wheels. And torque is pretty high now, thanks to the JB4 setup. I'm probably somewhere around 425 uh, pound-feet of torque, which is impressive for a small little V6 like this. Now, quick summary of how the intake system works. The uh, cold air intakes are up front, kind of pushes air in through the grill, and then that air is tunneled down past the MAF sensor into the turbo inlet. Now, the turbo is tied directly to the exhaust manifold, so it's pressed right against the block. And of course that turns the opposite side of the turbo, creates that suction, and that's what pulls more in. That's why it's called forced induction. Uh, now, that charged air, right, heats up. It's, I mean, we're using exhaust air, basically exhaust gases, exhaust output from the engine to turn the turbo. Uh, but the air that comes in from the front that's pulled in, gets forced through the turbo, spins really fast, heats up, that's boost pressure building. Then it gets thrown into the intercooler. The intercooler is an air to water setup, which means that, uh, you know, normally, like if you look at uh, some older school Japanese cars, they're gonna have uh, air to air intake setups and you'll see an intercooler down here. Uh, and that's just an air to air intercooler setup. So as you move, the air moves through the intercooler, think of it like a radiator, right? It's gonna cool down that charged air. Well, up top, we've got the water uh, set up here and there are pros and cons to this. Uh, up front, it's gonna do a great job, but these things heat soak fairly quick. So that's a downside of going with an air to water setup like this. We do have two uh, separate throttle bodies, so two separate intercoolers. Uh, but anyway, this cools down the air that's charged by the turbo, forced in through the throttle body, intake manifold, and then into the engine. The problem with this setup is that when you let off the throttle under high boost, let's say you rev to 6,000 RPM and you shift twice, or let's say you just let off the throttle, right, or you brake because you're in the city. Where does that boost pressure go? Some cars mitigate it with blow-off valves, some cars have recirculation systems. This car has neither, which means that the boost pressure gets pushed backwards through the entire system, and that is not good for the turbo. That's counteracting the natural spin, the natural tendency of the turbos on each side. So the solution is to install, in this case, HKS blow-off valve. Any blow-off valve kit will work. I'm going with HKS. The SSQVs are, uh, very uh, highly regarded in the industry, and that's why I chose them. Also, I appreciate the uh, prompt shipping from Z1 Motorsports. So they're gonna go basically right here. We're gonna in insert like a T-silicone uh, little piping set here. And uh, so that way, when air gets pushed backwards, the way it shouldn't be going, through the intercooler backwards and then where the turbo would be, which is further down there, uh, we're gonna have a little T-junction and that excess boost pressure can be cycled into the atmosphere through uh, a blow-off valve. And I'll show you what those look like in a second. So we're gonna insert the T, a uh, little T-neck here, and then we're also gonna install the blow-off valves on each side. You can see on this side, we've also got this pipe here and uh, the intercooler up top. So that charged air going backwards is gonna have a place to vent to atmosphere instead of going further down backwards through the turbos. Now this here is what one of the SSQV blow-off valves looks like from HKS. And uh, you can see it's got the authentic sticker up top looking mighty fine if I do say so myself. The reason why these things are so bulky and the reason why integrity matters for these is because let's say this gets stuck open, right? If it's in the open position, then all your boost pressure vents to atmosphere. There's less resistance that way than going backwards through a compressor or, or into a compressor or intake system. Uh, and uh, so you're gonna lose boost when you don't want to lose boost. And then if this valve gets stuck closed, then you're effectively undoing what this was supposed to do in the first place and you're not going to have that boost recirculate. It's going to get forced backwards through the intake system. So uh, yeah, it's important that these things work long term. You can see uh, some of the uh, inner workings there. Uh, but in general, that's why these exist, right? So you want these to open and close the way they're designed to so that you vent to atmosphere when you want to, uh, when, you, when the car needs to do so. So uh, yeah, we're gonna start installing right now.
So that is that. I wanted to give you a clip of what the blow-off valve sound like when installed. I didn't want to do this at my apartment complex because the car is uh, just a bit loud. I do apologize for the wind out here, but I didn't want to blue ball you. I wanted to at least show you what they sound like. And it definitely gives it that JDM kind of ricey sound. It's not going to be for everybody. Honestly, I didn't do it for the sound at all. Um, there are some little nozzles you could put in these blow-off valves to make the the ejection of air sound even higher pitched. I'm not really into that. Uh, it's just more or less, again, just to save the turbos in the long run because Infinity decided to ignore uh, the fact that people would probably be uh, boosting these cars a bit more than stock. So with that, if you guys like the video, change of pace, it's not gonna be the norm, don't worry. Let me know by giving this one a thumbs up, I appreciate it. I am on my way to Europe here soon to see Lisa, and then we will be actually uh, from Germany going to Spain for a couple of days. So maybe we'll find like a tech market in Barcelona to uh, film a video. We'll see how that goes. You guys are awesome, thanks for watching. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning from us.